Good morning. It is still morning for another 25 minutes. <laughs> and uh, I was starting from a completely different place. That's uh, Wascana Center there, where the Wascana Center Authority is headquartered. Looks after the park I'm often walking through. And we're going to start here and go off to the east and walk by the Saskatchewan Science Center, where I used to work. The lake's over there, but we're going to walk away from that part of the lake, although we'll be next to another part of the lake in pretty short order. Now, I walked along here the other day. But uh, I'll take a different path this time. I'm going to get over to where I can cross the street. There's a lot of people over there for some reason in that patch of grass. There's lots of little uh, picnic tables and areas throughout here, so it's really quite nice. And over there, I walked by there before at the uh, Moscana Center. There's a nice fenced garden behind it that I'll try to get into sometime. We're going this away. We have to get across Broad Street here. So if you're on YouTube or Facebook, let me know you're there. If you're on Facebook, let me know if I have sound. That seems to be a regular conundrum. And I can cross at the crosswalk here. So maybe I'll do that rather than going down to the uh, crosswalk over there. This one doesn't have a light, but there shouldn't be that much traffic and for the people who are driving, we'll pay attention to the fact that it's a crosswalk. For some reason, my shoe has started cutting into my foot in a very uncomfortable fashion. So let's see if I can do something about that for a second. I don't know what's doing it. Or it might just be a sensitive spot on my foot from all the walking I've been doing. Maybe. There we go. Beautiful day. A little breezy. Nice temperature though, it's, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16 right now, going up to 21. And you have that lovely spring green throughout the park here. Oh, there's somebody. Kirk from Vancouver. Hi. It's a beautiful day here. I hope it is in Vancouver. I hear it rains there once in a while. So I'm heading to the Saskatchewan Science Center and possibly beyond. We'll see what the... I don't really know how long it takes to walk from here to there. <laughs> I'd like to go further. There's a big hill that you can climb that would have a great view of the lake. So I think I've got time to get there, but we'll soon know. We won't be staying on the sidewalk here because there are no sidewalks to the park. We're gonna go over into the grass down by the lake. see the sign there for the IMAX. There we go. I mean, there is a path that I can stick to, but I'd rather walk over in the grass. So we're going to go into the grass, get closer to the lake and walk along there on the way to the Science Center.
there's uh, picnic tables tucked away in here too. It's not the wilds. <laughs> so I like to point out every single tree was planted by somebody. It didn't grow here naturally. Regina, this is a nice time of the year for Regina with the fresh greenery. And of course we have the really blue skies. Lando, living skies. So this is the east part of the lake. There's a bit of a path. You can see a lot of people walk down here. In fact, there's somebody coming over there and somebody coming the other way. So it works out. Figured I'd have it to myself. lake this side of it of course over there is the uh, Conexus Art Center it used to be known as the Saskatchewan Center of the Arts our major theatrical facility for big traveling shows and concerts Regina Symphony Orchestra plays there unstable internet connection to keep an eye on that to make sure YouTube stays up If anybody's on Facebook, let me know, and let me know if you can hear me. I can't do anything about it if you can't, but also if you can't, you didn't hear me ask that. The water seems particularly blue today there, through the trees. stable internet. Danger, thin ice. Yeah, I think so. I can already tell I'm going to wish I'd gone and church these instead of wearing my sweater, but oh, there's a nice view again across the lake. Be. Oh, the geese, baby geese are getting quite teenagerish. These aren't baby geese anymore, they're at least teenagers. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yay! Occasionally glitching. Yeah, I'm getting uh, some unstable internet connection warnings down here, but hopefully it stays up. View of the center of the arts through there, or sorry, the Connexus Art Center. The lake's more interesting than looking straight ahead. <laughs> I had no idea I'd see this many people on this path. It's not actually an area I've uh, walked along very often.
not good connections out here, so maybe I shouldn't try walking along here again. Next time I should stick to the road. Might be a bit better over there. But of course, if you're watching the uh, recording of this, none of that will bother you. It's only a problem for those watching live, and I'm sorry about that. I have no control. seen a warning that YouTube has gone down at least so and we're almost to the science center so I should be able to carry on to the uh, further on up the hill I hope and hopefully get better connections here as I come out of the trees Lots of geese on the yard here. So the Saskatchewan Science Center is where I started working when I moved to China in 1988. But it wasn't here yet. This is the former powerhouse. And uh, this is what we converted into the Science Center. But when I started, we were still in temporary offices downtown and this was under construction and then it officially opened in 89 with uh, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson on hand to do the honors and then I worked here until 1993 as communications officer and if you visit this now you will see uh, still a considerable number of the original exhibits are up, and uh, I wrote most of the copy on those. And a lot of the exhibits that have come along since then, on a freelance basis, I did. And they're, they've got some money to do some more work. Maybe some new exhibits, and uh, who knows? Maybe I'll get to write some of those too, as a freelancer. So it's called the Powerhouse of Discovery because it is in an old powerhouse. And there's a lovely restaurant in it as well called uh, Sky, Sky Bistro, which I recommend if you're in Regina, especially their Sunday brunches. That's probably why there's so many cars here. Some of these people are at the brunch. This outdoor science themed playground. this open when I was still here? It's hard to remember, or if it's newer than that. Not only did I work here as a communications officer, but my brother was uh, chairman of the board for a while. And uh, he was chairman when the Kramer IMAX Theater down here at the other end opened. So this was just a, kind of an extension to the original building. It was just like a big metal shed that was then, there's very little of that left. There's some structural steel, I guess, at the heart of the IMAX Theater here. Um, but I was here for the grand opening of that. Graham Kerr, that was his name, was one of the inventors of IMAX was here. There's a picture of me wearing a spacesuit because our first film was one of the space films. And uh, I actually took time lapse photos of the building. Well, they weren't really time lapse, but they were. You know, I took a picture a day, which could have been turned into a time lapse video if anybody ever bothered to do it. That was pre digital photography, though. Somewhere there should be stacks of photos showing the progress one day at a time. And I took photos from up in the powerhouse looking into this extension as it was being turned into a theater every day from the same spot as well. I've often wondered if they still have them. Because if they do, they should be 
turned into a time lapse of the building of the building. The building of the building. We're going to carry on. So when did it open? Uh, 91, 92, something like that. The Kramer IMAX Theater. Very exciting at the time. All right, we will carry on this way. Not a formal path, exactly, but enough of a path, which I've never walked along, so hopefully the signal stays up. lake again, just to my right. The trees. It's quite warm down here with the sun shining. All this bare dirt. Well, there's a bit of a hillside on this side, so... Ooh, watch my feet. Alright, out of the trees. very popular children's play park over there called Candy King Park. Sit there with my daughter a few times and some other things. But I'm hoping to walk over to the hill over there and go up it. Hopefully now that I'm out of the trees maybe the signal will stabilize. So I hope you're still there whoever is watching. Kirk, Roger, if you're still there. If anybody else is there, say hi. I can probably read it, depending on what the sun's doing. When I walk back, I'll walk down on the other side somewhere for variance. That's the University of Regina over there, those buildings in the distance, which I've walked to before and will do again. Or walk around, I might go park over there and walk around sometime this week. Park over there. I think that's what it's called. Gotta watch my feet. Oh well, Roger's still there at least. I guess that's the main play area over there. So aside from the Science Center, most of you are going to see dirt and trees here for a little bit. So I keep walking and water under over there. I get home, I'm going to mow the grass. It's trouble spring, so it's sort of stuck around. It's really annoying. I can see the playground over there, by the trees. So it's more developed over there. This is just very bushy. Very difficult to actually get to the water if you wanted to. is a uh, little overlook here, so let's go overlook things. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice panorama here. So that's back the way we came. You can see the Conexa Site Center over there. That's an apartment building, the other tall building there. And as you come along, there's the 
University, that's the tall buildings over there. And then that hill over there is where I plan to climb up to and get a good view over everything. So we'll be walking along over there. That's where we're going now. Some sort of path right down by the water, but I don't think I want to go down there. Probably lose my signal for sure down there. Yep, should have just gone with shirt sleeves and probably shorts today. Clearly, lots of bikes created most of these ruts and paths along here, as much as feet. That, that rut there is definitely a bike path. Harder to walk in the ruts than just walking in the grass, I think. Although maybe on the other side. Or it doesn't slope as much. Yeah, that's better. More parkland up here, Douglas Park up here somewhere. I don't know exactly where the demarcation is. So Regina has lots of green stuff around the lake, as you can see. And the hill over there that we're headed to, well, it's a landfill, but uh, I mean, it's not a natural hill. It got bigger though, when they, uh, when they uh, dredged out the lake a few years ago to make a deeper. That's where some of the dirt went. Not all of it, there's other new hills here and there. Some of it, I think, went on this hill to make it taller yet than it was. Years ago when I was doing weekly science column for CBC Saskatchewan, did the science of tobogganing, and Colin Gruer, who was the host, and I went up on this hill, and it was smaller then, and uh, slid down it while broadcasting, so that was fun. <laughs> Got to do fun things like that for a while. Instead of just being stuck in the studio, we'd go out and do things live. Well, they weren't live, they were recorded, but on location, I guess, is the term I want. These two there. So I have walked on the far side over there. There's a path that I followed to the university. If you look for my walk to the university I've done before, it was on the other side of this part of the lake. Next time I think I'll go park at or close to the university because I think you can take a whole hour just walking around the university and that seemed to be popular. I don't know if they were prospective students or who, but that was a popular video walking at the university. I think to get up I'll have to go over here, join the proper path. Might be the best place to go. can go down that way, but I'm going to rejoin the actual bike path here.
main experience with this park over here was when my daughter was in school, they hold the cross country meets over here and she ran once. She hated it, but she did it. Didn't do too badly either. So far I know of one person that's been on YouTube and one person on Facebook. If you're on either of those watching, let me know you're there. I can say hi, I can respond to questions. Assuming I can read, well I can read, assuming I can see the screen, I am capable of reading. Oh, look, there's a note right there from Kirk. Uh, not a cloud in the sky, no, it's literally really pretty and it's only going to 21 today so it's not going to be bitterly hot quite pleasant but again even the sweater I'm wearing was a little much for this amount of walking in the sun a lot of people out enjoying it that's for sure see the binoculars there that's pointing us up the hill which is where we're going to climb over here Sort of been meaning to come out here for a long time, but it needs to be a weekend. Oh, there's a lookout over there I didn't even know about, too. But we're going up the hill this time. Saskatchewan Legislative Building there in the distance. The lake starts to really spread out as you get a little bit higher. I had no idea there was a lookout down there. hills on my walks. I seem to be doing okay though. Well I've been walking an hour a day for two months. It ought to be making a difference in my level of fitness. Kind of the whole point of this. Yes, it's to share these views with the world, but also to motivate me to get more exercise. And I'd say it's done that. I'm breathing harder though. I think there's a kind of a footpath down the side I might take going down instead of this path. I can get off the road. Panorama from the peak, such as it is. I 
Alrighty. I'll do a panorama of Virginia, Saskatchewan. So, start over there. I'm gonna zoom it in a little too. So. There's uh, First Nations University, and then University, the rest of the University. And as you go around, you see Roberts Plaza there, the apartment building I was talking about. And then there's the Connexus Arts Center, and the Saskatchewan Legislative Building beyond it. There's downtown. White bump is Mosaic Stadium where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders play. And the rest of the lake. Way off in the distance, you can see the uh, co-op refinery. And that bigger hill over there, that's the actual landfill. That's the rubbish disposal landfill. Nations University and the university again. So there you go, Regina, Saskatchewan. Zoom in. Zoom in. Quite a bit. There you go. But I don't want to be stuck like that, so now I got to zoom it out again. There, I've been meaning to come up there for quite a while. It seemed to have a good internet connection while I was up there, at least I didn't see any warnings that I didn't. Now, let me see. I don't see too much different if I go down here, but I might as well go down here because I'm here. come up here and look down from up here as well.
Oops, that's somebody new. Hello, uh, Dave Tube. <laughs> Welcome to Regina, Saskatchewan on a warm, is it noon yet? Yes, it's now afternoon, 12.15 here. Just climbed up, I don't know what they call that hill, Douglas Park Hill, I don't actually know. Now uh, descending, and I'll be sort of working my way back to where I left the car. I thought I'd go take a look at the football field down here. And this bike path continues. You can take it through many kilometers of Regina. There's a bike path that will take you from one, basically from one point to the other. I think there might be some breaks. You can do it. And this is Douglas Park over here. Back down to the proper path here. Oh, easier footing for sure. I don't currently have a bicycle. It was stolen and I haven't replaced it. Looking forward to Shapers of Worlds Volume 2. Oh, me too. <laughs> I've got, I counted it up. That's for those who don't know. Uh, that's the anthology I kickstarted, which will feature science fiction and fantasy by authors who were guests on the second year of my Aurora award winning podcast. The World Shapers, following up uh, Shapers of Worlds, which I kickstarted last year, which is now available widely everywhere. So volume two will be bigger. It has 24 stories, 18 original and six reprints. And I think I have 13, I think. I'm not going to go much further along the path. I want to go over here and take a peek at the football field. I got 13 of the stories in already. So, uh, getting closer. I haven't really done any editing yet, but I've sent out contracts and paid a lot of authors, and I'm sending out, uh, I'm sending out the backers rewards as I can. So I've got a lot of mailing to do with the people who bought a print copy of the original Shapers of Worlds. That's a fairly major undertaking to mail all that out. So I'm not sure where the best place is to look in here. If we're on to the other side, maybe there's a better view than trying to look through the mesh fence. This is a football field that's used by Regina minor football, primarily, I think. And we'll go around the end of it and then we'll be on the homeward bound, or carward bound anyway, since I didn't start from home today. If you're interested in the podcast, it's at theworldshapers.com. The most recent episode features Jane Yolen, and the next one will feature Christian Cameron. I've actually got enough already taken care of or lined up. They'll take me right through the summer. And then we'll see. I'm not sure if I'll continue it for a fourth year or not. But uh, I do plan to do another Kickstarter next year for Volume 3 of Shapers of Worlds, at least. Oh, 
I think the gates may be open. We can actually take a quick look. Oh, there's people practicing in there. You can see it now. Over there. Hmm. I'll just pop in here and take a quick look at it. It's quite a nice field. It's got lights and features and everything, so it's a very nice field. Looking at me suspiciously. Oops, I'll get trapped over here if I'm not careful. There's uh, more fields over there, so nature's in another field. So lots of sports happen here. Libel field, that's what they call this. Oops, watch out for the speed pump. <laughs> uh, I can see the note. I can't read it because of the sunshine on it. On my screen, let's see. Oh, you're at Lisa Foyle's video greeting. Good. Yeah, she was interesting to talk to. Not exactly my usual, you know, writing is her main thing. She's an actress primarily, but she wrote a middle grade book and uh, it was very interesting to talk to. Here's the other end of the field. Field. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Not really some place I have been very often. As I said, my main reason to come here was uh, when Alice was uh... well this is actually headquarters for China Minor Football, but well, that makes sense. <laughs> she was here. The boys' room. Did you need them? This baseball field. This one has real dugouts, it looks like actual dugout dugouts. Usually they're just sheds. A few bleachers. Unfortunately, a lot of that's been happening recently, but you know, not so much for this being a path. You know, I'm dumped back into the grass. Well, that's okay. It's not wet. Walking in the grass is not a hardship. I missed another comment. No, oh, I didn't. Let's not walk into the trees. Because of the wide angle nature of the uh, iPhone camera, when you watch somebody doing this, it often looks like they're about to walk into something that's actually well off to the side from their point of view. We noticed that on Walking Commuter, the guy in Manhattan that kind of inspired me to do this. You'll swear he's going to walk into a lamppost, but 
course he doesn't. Oh look, the very beginning of a path. I guess it's a path. I would say it's some sort of logo made out of paths. More than a path per se. the hill that we went up and came down again so we're on the homeward homeward trek now I don't know what that represents it's a big circle looks like it might have had something in the middle of it that's not there anymore I don't know never walked in this part of the park along these paths. I'm going to stay over here just to keep it different from the way I came. Can't get too seriously lost. It's a large park. is taking me away from the direction I want to go. So I think I will go through the grass again. Head for the, there must be an alley up here, it looks like. I should be able to walk. I want to go off to the left, that's where the car is. to have a house facing onto the park, maybe. It's an open space to look at anyway. Oh, on top of that hole in the ground. There's another comment there. If I get in the shade, I'll see what it says. Ah. Looks like it's winter in Regina than in Saskatoon right now. It usually is, I think. But yeah, there have been windier days for sure. Hello, Miriam from India. If you're just joining, you missed the uh, most scenic part. I was up on the hill, but check it out in the check it out in the recording. Okay. Now, if I go that way, I'm retracing my steps quite a bit. I'm actually going to go join the sidewalk up here and walk back a little different than the way I came. There's a sidewalk on the other side, that's probably because we're scenic. Yeah, that's not a sidewalk, that's just a bit of concrete in the middle of the grass. That was a piece of sidewalk I was seeing. Maybe a longer walk, I can't tell yet, until I can see the clock. How long have I been out? 
51 minutes. Yeah, it'll be a bit longer than some, but not extraordinarily so. Probably an hour 20 or something by the time I get back to the car. At least 20 minutes to go, maybe 25. across the pier, one way or the other. I want to be on this side, so I guess that's where I'll go. There's a, for sure, sidewalk now. Going in the direction we want to go. Or does it go in the direction we want to go? Actually, it doesn't really go in the direction we want to go. So I guess I do want the other side of the street. As I walked through the park over there coming, I thought I'd walk more through the residential streets over here going back. He's doing something with a saw. Ooh. Some lovely lilacs. I smelled them first before I saw them. Another note from Dave. Did I learn something from this Kickstarter different from the previous one? Uh, no, I probably have too many rewards. About the more the merrier. But of course that meant that some rewards weren't taken. And since they're usually something that a an author donated. I feel a little bad about that. On the other hand, if they donated it, you know, maybe they, it's not like they were making money off of it, but there were a lot of reward possibilities and not all of them were taken by any means. It's a nice house. Otherwise, I actually made more money from fewer backers this time. Which was interesting. And reduces the overall production cost some, which is good. Now, I've never been to that piece of road. <laughs> interesting. Looks like we're out of sidewalk again. That was Douglas Crescent, this is Douglas Road, and we just came from Douglas Park, so those would all be named presumably after T.C. Douglas, former Premier of Saskatchewan in the 40s and early 50s. Lots of stuff named after him. Nice to have a sidewalk along here. Could go walk in the grass on the other side, but there were backers' rewards in the Kickstarter that I was just sure somebody would take, and nobody did. Like. Uh, Tuckerizations, which is where an author uses your name for a character. Uh, Matthew Hughes, a couple of those were snapped up at I think $500 each. That was a big boost. 
or his uh I'm gonna cross again. I'm getting tired of walking on that and the path kind of is now which we'll pick up here. Well or will I pick it up? Or do I want to keep going? Let me think where I am. That's gonna curve us back to the same path we followed to get here. Still, it's better than walking on the grass. And as somebody took mine to be in the story I'm gonna write for the anthology, which I'm one of the stories that's still to come, I haven't written it yet. I have an idea, that's about it. But there were a couple of others that weren't taken. Oh, people really enjoying the sunshine today. Oh yes, there's the kind of dinosaur slide over there. It's part of this park. balloons up there. Somebody must be having a birthday. Wild animal chasing a child. <laughs> huh. Be ready for lunch when I get home. I ate a huge cinnamon bun just before I came out, so it's not like I'm starving. But walking does take energy. Kind of the point. See the balloons? Over there. I have a sweater that says CBC News on it. But uh, I, like, I don't like to wear that one when I walk, because people will think I'm actually doing a news story. Uh, there are a couple of rewards I was looking at until I saw the one with Lisa, then it was settled. <laughs> yeah, there are some great rewards. And it worked. It funded. So that's all you can ask. Didn't overfund by a huge amount, but it funded enough that I think it will cover the production costs. Most of the money goes to pay the authors. And then to uh, print the Kickstarter version of the anthology and get it shipped out. The commercial version. Last time I had a grant and had it printed, but it was distributed through another publisher. And I didn't like that. I have no control and I'm not getting a lot of reports back. And half the time in the uh, bookstores, it shows up as being printed by, or published by Radiant Press, which is the publisher that had this distribution agreement that I piggybacked on. I don't like that, because, I mean, Shadowpaw Press's name doesn't get mentioned. I'm going to join the sidewalk on the other side again, I think, as soon as these cars go by easier walking. So I think the uh, next anthology, the new one, there's still somebody coming. I think the new one I'm going to do in my usual print-on-demand model. Bookstores can still order it. It's distributed through Ingram. And uh, I have more control. It'll be an experiment. After doing one one way and one the other, I'll know what to do with the third one if it happens next year, if I can Lightning strikes three times in a row and I fund another Kickstarter for it. For Miriam, must visit Canada one day. A good idea, I recommend it. I'd like to visit India someday. A lot of places in the world though, it's hard to get to them all. Every time you watch a travel show, it's like, that's such a beautiful place in some city you've never heard of and some country you've barely heard of. That's not India, but some small European country maybe. 
looks like a great place to visit. But even with the relative, well, of course, no travel with the pandemic, but as that opens up, even with the relative uh, ease of travel, it's, uh, you know, that we have in the modern world, it's still not easy to get to a lot of places. And it takes money. Still got quite a ways to go to get back to the car, so I did make this a long walk by walking all the way over there to the football field. But I wanted to do it, and I did it. Getting dry too, she brought water. <laughs> the geese will take any bit of water they can find. And the ducks as they mosey across the road over there. There's a whole lake over there. Here they are in these little puddles. <laughs> okay, now then. You definitely want to be over there where that bunny rabbit is running away. And this will, oh, there's the alley I'm looking for. Okay, so I'll cut through the trees and I'll go down this. At a parking lot. I think that's the alley that'll take us down as well as walking down here, which is fine, but it's looking for some different path. I think this should run all the way down alongside the road here. I mean, I admit alleys are not necessarily scenic, but at least it's different than where I walk. Brown bins are garbage. In our neighborhood, tomorrow is garbage day. The blue bins are recycling. Hi. Hi. New house going up there with a view over the lake and the I don't know if they can see the lake, but they can certainly see the uh, big house, too. They can certainly see the park, possibly the lake from the upper story there. Woof, woof, woof. Our lilacs. We have a lilac in the backyard that hasn't even bloomed yet. It's always late. It's kind of shaded back there. Somebody that doesn't like blank white garage doors. Oh, and it's opening as I walk by it. Creepy. Well, if I go up here, I can walk on the actual road. Which is better than the alley from a things to look at point of view. There we go, although this may get me sort of trapped. I may regret that. It may have just made me, forced me to go out of my way. As I've said before, about an hour is good. Once I go past an hour, I start to think, when will this be over? <laughs> sort of getting to that point now. But it is a lovely day. And it's exercise. See, I kind of want to go straight. Of course, there's houses in the way. I think that's just a driveway. Won't take me through to the alley again. 
Well, it might. I don't know when I get next to it. No. Takes me into somebody's backyard. I don't think they would want me to go in there carrying my camera. The car's over there. <laughs> I just have to get over to Broad Street again. Should have stayed on the alley. Take that road up there where you see somebody walking. Takes me in the right direction. or an old one being renovated, can't tell for sure. I know where I am, just don't necessarily have the best roads to get me where I need to go. So I've definitely taken myself a bit out of my way on the return trip here. Driveway, or is it an alley? Am I still going to have to go north? I think it's an alley. Yeah, it's an alley. Okay. This takes me back in the way I want to go. And I can see exactly where I am and where the, where the uh, car is oh I see yeah if I'd stayed on that other alley he would have brought me to right here because uh, still haven't come to broad that's their ways yet There'd be somebody coming down the alley just when I'm walking on it. But there is. Oh, there's another note. Uh, what's going to be for lunch? Probably just a sandwich. But it'll be a very good sandwich after this. And iced tea. Or something cold. I usually make iced tea the drink of choice for Texans. And we make, my family makes, the perfect iced tea. If you want to make iced tea, perfect iced tea. Three tea bags and an ordinary teapot. Boiling water, let it steep, let it go cold. When you make the tea regular, oh, and I'm getting buffering right now, aren't I? Well, you'll have to watch the replay. You uh, use two thirds of a cup of sugar or your sweetener of your choice. There's a nice still blooming tree. Mix it all together, fill up your glass with ice, fill it up with iced tea, and Bob's your uncle, even if you don't have an Uncle Bob. Or shish kebab. <laughs> so, only those of you watching the replay may have heard that perfect iced tea recipe because it says I have unstable internet. This should bring us back to the same crossing I took when I started this walk, more or less. Yeah, there it is right there, I think.
Or at least it's a crossing. I think, yeah, it's the same one. I think it's the same one I took when I started this walk. So I'm only about five minutes for the car now, maybe less. Just have to get across here without anybody running me over. And it is a pedestrian crosswalk, but it has no lights. So. They're supposed to stop for you. the lake in. The car is parked right over here. How long have I been walking? Now we're in, now we're in 12 minutes, so not that unusual. I usually manage to guesstimate pretty much, pretty accurately how long these walks would take. According to my Apple Health app, <clears throat> I apparently walk at a rate of about six kilometers an hour. So presumably that's about how long I've walked. Back at the Wascana Center Authority, Wascana Center that's called, but Wascana Center Authority is the name of the people who look after the park. All of that, almost everything we walked through would be under Wascana Center Authority. So it's a big, big park in total. As I've said before, it's bigger than Central Park in total. So more spread out and not as many tall buildings around the edges. So here's the parking lot. There's West Canada Center and that'll do it for today. Thanks for walking with me if you walked with me live and thanks for watching the replay if you watch the replay. I'll be back tomorrow with a shorter walk just along the creek like I normally do on Mondays. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.